brothers of how they deal with it in their own fields. So yeah, today's topic is fame and <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum that was a beautiful response. I didn't, I didn't get that. That's because you're not that famous. <laughs> uh, may Allah forgive us. That's actually a very good way of starting. Uh, Brother Ali was just telling me what we're going to be talking about. And mashallah, it is a very, very big challenge. It is a double edged sword. Fame is a double edged sword. And it's also a fitna. It's also a very big test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, while you need to rise to the occasion when you need to fulfill some duties and obligations that Allah has placed on your shoulders, I think one of the biggest challenges that we face is the excitement of the people and where you allow it to take you. If you let the fact that so many people have benefited from you, I'm talking about myself, Brother Moheen, uh, I'm one of his fans, so that's fine. We'll talk about him a bit later, inshallah. Uh, I told him as we were walking in, I said, you go in, you do the batting, I'll do the fielding. And he said, okay, <laughs> mashallah. So sometimes when you have uh, people whom you may have benefited in some way, I need to keep reminding myself that it's not me, it's Allah. This work can be taken from anyone else. This work can be taken away from me and it can be given to someone or it can be shared with other people. I need to be very happy for everyone else doing the same work. That's something I always try to do. And this because subhanAllah, I have mentors and I have my father as well keeps me in check all the time. And he keeps reminding me to say, you know what? you better make sure that you realize that you're just a human being and I am and I don't think those who know me my closed circle when I say closed circle I mean let's say close circle okay would actually confirm that I try my best to be myself but then people start uh, wanting to for example take photos with you it's a problem everyone wants to take a photo or selfie and it becomes an issue because if you take one people say this guy's a celebrity shape, by the way. And if you don't take one, this guy's arrogant. Look at him. He doesn't even want to acknowledge these children. I mean, I had a child moments ago come to me with a beautiful gift, whatever it was. And he was explaining to me and I said, you know what? I love you so much. You don't need to give me something. I really love you. It's not that you need to give me. No, but I want to. And imagine if everyone had to come with something. I would need to fly on my own plane to go back home. So by default, it's not wrong to give away what someone has given you. Uh, although some people say you're not allowed to give it away. And you cannot impose that on me. But you don't need to give something to someone. Also, what I've learned over time is you have to try to explain to people and talk to them and tell them that look, this is the reality. I have a platform of speaking to people. So I say it. Last night I was speaking at some masjid and I remember reading a WhatsApp message someone forwarded me to say, one of the biggest scholars of our time. And I started my talk by saying, Astaghfirullah, I need to clear it. I'm not one of the biggest of the time. I am actually a nothing and a nobody, to be honest with you. Allah's used us to share a few words with people and therefore we will share those words and praise Allah and make dua for me. And that's it. We don't have to I know people might say, but I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. But even if you did not see me, your chances of entering Jannah are still the same. And it doesn't mean you saw me. So now suddenly uh, the angel will say, hang on, hang on. Did you see Mufti Man? Yes. Okay. You got to come on this side here. <laughs> did you take a selfie with him? Okay. Okay. The temperature of your grave is going to be two degrees lower. It doesn't happen. So I, I've tried to remind people. Uh, in this regard and I know people get irritated with me as well the reason why they get irritated and I'm sure it might be happening with brother Moeen and so many others because you don't realize or the people sometimes don't realize with a very good heart they want a piece of you so you get 20 messages initially then it becomes 200 then it becomes 2000 and honestly it becomes a few thousand if I were to add up all my messages that I get every single day uh, I actually cannot put a figure. It goes well beyond 20,000. Well beyond 20,000. That's if I count Twitter 
and Facebook and Instagram and email, all the different emails and platforms as well as my phone, WhatsApp, the phone calls, it's everything put together, it's a crazy amount. So what do I do? I have to make dua. Ya Allah, whoever has emailed me with any difficulty, you help them. Because I also have to turn to Allah. I might not be able to respond to you, but I have to turn to Allah. I cannot be a person who, you know, wants to uh, claim that for myself. Okay, okay, I can't manage, I can't cope. And even if I were to respond, I have to still refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, you, you have to be careful. A person like me has to be careful. You don't develop wings, you know, you don't develop horns, as my mother says. Don't develop horns, which means don't start becoming an animal, thinking that I'm a big deal. And that's it. Allah can drop you straight away. And you despise people. You look at them and yeah, by the way, talk to those who are uh, the least, who would expect it, the least that you spoke to them. I've actually sometimes gone to visit people uh, based on something very random sometimes. And they would be shocked. But that's it. The idea is, number one, idkhal al-sururi fi qalb al-mu'min. To, to put happiness into the heart of a believer is an act of worship. So it's for making that happen. And number two, it's to show them, you know what, we're just human beings. You might see me, yes, I'll be traveling, I'll be walking here. It's, it would probably be me, me. People come to me sometimes at, at a mall, at an airport. Uh, are you, if they say, do you know Mufti Mink? And I say, I know him. <laughs> it's true, I know him. Uh, and then some say, are you Mufti Mink? I say, why, why do I look like him? So you try to like sort of brush it off and then sometimes you can't run away. You know, they say, yeah, it is you and so on. But let's remember one thing and I'm going to hand over back to you because I can talk, you know. Uh, let's remember one thing that Allah, we owe it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings, we respect them. It stops at that respect. When it comes to the relationship, people say to me, I turned because of you. Hang on, reword it. I turned because of Allah. And he used you to do a little bit of that work. Alhamdulillah. So we just got to word it correctly. I try my best. And if I go wrong, slap me. No problem. You can slap me. I give you the permission to do that, inshallah. Habib. Okay, may Allah bless you. Um, before I get into it, obviously, well, uh, Mufti Mink, um, you're around Muslims and it's mainly, you know, the Daos. To non Muslims as well. Me personally, I'm, sometimes I'm out there giving Dawah, speak to non Muslims. But Brother Mohan Ali, you work with non-Muslims. You know, that's a really different thing. I have a couple of friends, non-Muslims as well, but I don't really like because you said you spend a lot of time. Like, um, so how is it for you, um, you know, being around uh, non-Muslims? And how do you give them that one? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, for me, it's, uh, it's quite difficult sometimes, you know. It's, um, um, I, I sort of remind myself the reason why I'm playing and um, the reason why I'm out here playing for England and, and doing what I do. And I have a few ways like, to, to remind myself. And the main one is, to, first of all, to tell myself that um, one day I will die and all this will finish. And, um, you know, that really keeps me grounded. And a lot of the time when I'm traveling, I, and I'm on a plane and I look down and I think, you know, you can see a lot of people, a lot of buildings, and you see little, little, you know, you can really see uh, people. And I, I tell myself that actually what I'm doing is, in, on a personal point, it's, um, just, it's worth nothing, you know. We're really actually little, little human beings and, and things like that. So that keeps me grounded as much as I can. And I try and, um, you know, be the best I can, especially the non-Muslims. I, I try and um, implement the manners that I need to implement. And that doesn't mean, you know, you got to be all serious and, um, you know, you, you got to have a laugh and joke with the guys and, you know, try and do everything as much as you can with them. Obviously, when they do their around things and we, we don't uh, we don't do that but a lot of the time it's about um, you know just having that, that sort of banter with them and, and and being being almost real with them I think if you be yourself with them then um, they will respect you a lot more and uh, explain you know you don't have to explain things as much as everybody else do you has I don't know why maybe it was me I'll take the blame um, has any of them ever come to you and said, like, asked you about Islam? Have they ever wanted to fast with you? Have they tried to? Um, like, I'm sure you get these questions. Yeah, a lot of, uh, many times, you know, especially, um, you know, if, if a couple of us are doing our salah and things, you know, they ask us uh, why we do our salah, for example, and, and, and obviously during the month of Ramadan at the moment, we're playing in England and they, they always ask, you know, how do you do it and things like that. But alhamdulillah, you know, it's, um, it's, 
it's a way for us to explain, you know, about giving charity, about being good, and and you know the reasons behind why we fast. And uh, we've had one player who wanted to fast with us one day, and you know he got up for sahri with us, and and I told him, you know, um, you won't be able to do it. And he asked me why. He's, if you can do it, then why can't I do it? And I said to him because the reason why we do it is because we do it for Allah and it's Ramadan and the reasons behind it. And he he said to me, no, no, I'll be able to do it, no problem. So he got up and. Uh, he, he did a sahri and we had a tough training session that day and I remember he came to me at lunchtime and he obviously smelled the, the, the chips and the, the baked beans and things like that and he goes, look, I, I can't do it anymore and I said to him, like, I told you, you can't do it. And he, and he goes, why couldn't I do it? And I said, because the reason you're doing it is to prove to yourself and prove to me that you can, you can fast and um, that is a complete, almost different reason for why we do it. And, um, you know, we do this a lot, you know, a lot of the guys, they always ask about the Arabic and and you know when they hear the Adhan in, in UAE and things like that. So you know, it's, for me, it's a perfect opportunity to to give my level sort of da'wah. And I don't really go up to them as much. I wait for them to come to me a lot of the time. Well, mashallah. And one thing I just want to highlight before I ask the second question is uh, how important we, we we sometimes think da'wah is opening a store in the middle of the city. It's not. That's not it. A lot of people think, okay, brother, Ali, how can I get involved in da'wah? And I'm thinking, why? What makes you think da'wah is just going out there. One of the biggest forms of da'wah that I believe I give to, gave to my own father, and uh, obviously may Allah keep me humble, and I'm not, not saying that uh, I've done anything special, but my dad hated Islam. And every time when he would open that TV and see a terrorist attack, he would just say, hey, that's you and your friends, you know? That's what he would say to me, you know? And one of the ways that I've dealt with that is not talk, well, give da'wah verbally as well, but actions. Your actions speak louder. Wallahi by Allah, your actions speak louder. Because people look at your manners and they're thinking, what makes this person so beautiful in character? I want to know the one he worships. And this is really crucial that we forget. Um, I just wanted to give you guys as that reminder, but now coming back to uh, our main topic. Um, now there's a lot of brothers out there. Obviously they deal with charity work and they do a lot of things. Now sometimes they're in this dilemma where they're thinking, I don't want to get involved, I don't want popularity. So what that does is the shaitan works in a way where he abstains from doing good because he's thinking, if I do it then I'm going to be known or people are going to think I'm doing it for this reason. Because sometimes I have a brother who's another YouTuber, he would tell me sometimes he's like, I'm around brothers and I would want to help them. But then shaitan makes him think like, oh, you're trying to be humble. But then if I don't, then okay, uh, they're going to be thinking, oh, he's arrogant. He just thinks he's... So how does one deal with that, you know? To have that balance where it doesn't go to one extreme of doing nothing and not the other extreme of doing it all for fame. I think a good Muslim should always question his or her intentions and keep questioning to say, am I doing it for the right reason? But the idea of questioning should not be to block it or stop it, rather to correct the intention and to keep it right. So the shaitan will definitely keep coming and making you think, uh, think to yourself that perhaps I'm trying to show this humility and so on. But you need to say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan al rajim and still do what is right. You see, that's the beauty. So we are taught to seek the protection in Allah from Shaitan the accursed and do what's right. So Allah didn't say that you stop what, doing what's right, but you seek Allah's protection and keep yourself humble in that way. So I think that with myself as well, uh, if, if the fame has come, Wallahi, I haven't asked for it. I did not promote myself. But it came without me expecting it. Those of you who know my upbringing and who know where I've started, you would probably be amazed that how did this happen? I don't know myself. But I've just maintained consistency in the sense that I try not to attack people. I try to present the da'wah in a positive way. And I try to give value to all the people, no matter who they are. They must feel valuable. If I see a little child, this little boy right in front of me taking a picture, for example. I mean, he's as good as my own son. I, I cannot get upset with him. What are you doing here? Get out. No, I know you can sit there. Don't worry. You can take another picture. Perhaps I can teach you something. You can turn around, put your face facing the other way, and you can actually have a selfie from where you're sitting. Did you hear what I said? Yes. So what I mean is, why should I chase him? I can actually uh, relate to them. And this just is because of myself. 
And it's because I am constantly concerned about the people around me to make sure that I don't develop this feeling within me. And then when I do this, sometimes, before it was a bit more, now it's less. Shaitan used to come and say, hey, what are you trying to prove? You want to just prove your point. And I think that's what you're saying. Well, you have to constantly say, no, I'm not trying to prove a point. I'm doing that which is right. And I'm actually going to do this because it is correct. And through that, you end up touching the lives of so many people because trust me, there's a lot of hopelessness out there. There's a lot of, you know, chaos out there. People are looking for hope. People are looking for someone who can relate to them. People are looking for someone who can tell them that don't worry, the mercy of Allah is very near to you rather than someone who's just blasting them day in, day out. When I first graduated, that's what I used to do. I used to get up. When I listen to some of my older lectures, I feel so, so, you know, there's a cringe. I want to delete them because I tell myself, was that really you just telling everyone you're going to hell basically? And as you develop and you grow, you soften up and you realize I'm softening because I, I am now in the real world. I was an idealistic before. Now you're a realist. You have to face the facts. You have to understand the world is changing. How are you going to face the challenges without compromising your deen? And how are you going to guide others? Because they want guidance. We all love Allah. Even the brothers who are committing sins, the sisters who may be committing sins, I'm sure deep down they claim to love Allah. And I'm sure that love is there. So all you got to do is kindle it. And if you're going to allow shaitan to come to you and make you think that I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing this because I might become famous, then you fell in the trap of the devil exactly where he wants you to be. So like I said right at the beginning, double-edged sword. May Allah make it easy for all of us. My advice to you all, keep on doing good work no matter what it is, but be aware that shaitan may come to you in different ways. Seek the protection in Allah from shaitan the accursed and keep on doing what is right. Allahu A'lam. Okay, may Allah bless you. Um, I want to discuss two.